Good morning, Trinity United Methodist Church family and friends. Happy to have you joining us online on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Hope that this is a meaningful time of worship for you today. Join with me responsively in our call to worship. During this Lenten time, let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. God has blessed us. Let all people praise you, O Lord. And now let's join together in prayer. Gracious God, so often we have missed your presence because we are looking for you clothed in a particular way. Let this time of worship be an encounter with you that will enable us to behold you in all the people we meet and all the situations we greet. You are from everlasting to everlasting, so we are confident that you are here. Help us to be aware of your holy presence. O Lord, enrich this act of worship with the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Testament reading today comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. Hear these words. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it up on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it up on a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. 
This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us go to God in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for another day, another day of life, a new day to spend in your presence. Thank you for the gift of time that we might live each moment for you. Free us from the busyness of this day that we might find rest in you. Release us from worry and uncertainty that we might see you clearly. Lift us in your spirit that we might be filled with your love. Sustain us with your strength that we might serve you each and every day. Embrace our hearts and touch us with your gentleness. Embrace our minds and reveal to us your wisdom. Embrace our souls that they might be one with you. Hear our unspoken prayers tend to the needs and our burdens and tend to the needs and burdens of others. For you know far more than we do what is best. For those you have laid upon our hearts, we lift them up to you in prayer. Be with those, Lord, who are in places of unrest and turmoil, war and violence. Be with innocent children and others who are in difficult places not of their own choosing. Be with families and individuals struggling because of the loss of a loved one, their job, or their home. Reveal your peace to those who seem to think revenge and hatred are the answer. Display a servant's heart to those who seek power at the expense of others. Show us the beauty of your creation and your delight when all people come together to praise you. Through us, open the door to your kingdom that others may find you. May we not be afraid to sacrifice anything 
that keeps us from being who you have called us to be and continue to grow in us until our lives are completely filled with you. Help us to carry our cross, to deny ourselves, and to look to you in order to live out each day in your will. As we continue to navigate through the darkness of these times, shine your light and lead us through them. Help us turn away from the one who would plant things in our lives to tempt us and cause us to turn away from you. Plant your seeds of love and hope in our hearts and in this world and continue to teach us your ways as you taught your disciples to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Okay, so um, I'm doing it again. Our lectionary text comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. However, to give context to that, I think we have to back up and, and read from the beginning. So we're going to um, read 1 through 21, uh, so you get the full context around it. So hear these words. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, the leader, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above, or being born anew. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born in the flesh is flesh, and what is born in the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born again, born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born in the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe it if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that they may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. And this is the word of God for us people of God. Thanks be to God. So I want to begin this morning by looking back, uh, looking back at our Old Testament reading that Carolyn read uh, from the book of Numbers. Now if you uh, remember, Numbers is one of the first five books of the Bible, uh, the part of the Torah if you are Jewish. Um, the Greeks uh, called it the Pentateuch. Uh, which translates as the first five books. Um, it's always been a story that has captured my attention. 
we can still, of course, see this symbol in our society today on our ambulance vehicles and medical badges and signs, the, the snake or two snakes uh, sometimes on a stick, symbolizing, of course, that which heals. Now, the story has captured my attention, I think, because of the way that this situation is handled within the story. In responding to the Israelites' plea for mercy, God does not take them out of the wilderness, nor does God remove the dangers, but rather God delivers an antidote, a way to counter the problem. But the antidote does not negate all of their concerns. They're still surrounded by snakes nipping at their heels. Now, it's probably safe to assume that their prayer was that God would remove the snakes, uh, move them out of their way, give the Israelites a clear path on their journey, make their way easier. But God chose a different way. So the bronze serpent, the snake on a stick, I like to call it, represents choosing to trust in what God is creating, what God is doing, and how God is moving. Notice there's no theology test. There's no biblical test. All they needed to do was to trust God, to look up and live. That brings us to our gospel text, which contains a reference to the passage in Numbers, but instead of a snake on a stick, it's the Son of Man on a stick. And this gospel passage also contains one of the most known verses, if not the most known verse, in the entire New Testament. John three, sixteen. Now, I have to admit to you that when it comes to pre preaching on such a passage, um, it ain't easy. Most preachers that I know uh, would rather preach on a passage that is not as familiar. Um, we sort of walk a tightrope when it comes to uh, such a verse as this because we think that we should have it all figured out by now or you think that you know it so well that there's nothing new to hear or perhaps we uh, preachers are afraid of saying something that would offend folks or go against what you've always heard or thought before. I mean, John 3.16, after all, it, uh, it hangs on walls, it rides on bumper stickers, it flies on banners, it appears at sporting events. I've never really understood that, by the way. It soars across computer screens and monitors and screen savers. It was even held up at the raid upon the Capitol building. John 3.16 is used so much that I wonder if it is in peril of losing its voice of promise. Because it seems like rather than being of a claim of assurance, it's used today, sometimes, as an injunction for judgment. It's unfortunate, to say the least, that when, when Bible verses are taken out of their context and misused or abused. I wonder how many people holding up John 3.16 at the sporting events would know that this was a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. Do they ever go and read the entire context? 
what comes before that verse and after it. I wonder how many people know the verse that immediately follows. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm down on John 3.16. That's not the case at all. It is a beautiful verse within its context. And I find this entire conversation with Nicodemus to be intriguing. I believe that the questions that they are addressing are indeed questions that we ask today and we struggle with, such as, how does one come to faith, to have faith, to grow in their faith? How does one grow and mature in one's experience of God? If our interests during this journey of Lent is around deepening our walk with God, then I think that this passage from John, including John 3.16, has much to teach us. But I want to approach it, perhaps, uh, in a new way, with uh, the entire context in mind. So let me offer a few ways in which spiritual formation, spiritual growth, occurs. Not the only ways, of course, but we find these in this passage. And it's difficult for me to imagine my own spiritual journey and growth without them. So number one is a community of faith. John begins his story like this. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus as one who has experienced God uh, or his experience of God has been nurtured and, and supported by a community of faith. So much so that he has grown into a spiritual leader himself. I think John's gospel reminds us of this because for his community, uh, the community, uh, the Johannan uh, community, uh, for this particular gospel, the role of the faith community is central and essential to one's faith formation. Now, I guess this would somewhat be preaching to the choir because if you are here or if you are tuning in online, you are a part of this community of faith and we are glad to have you a part of it. I know that COVID has made it hard and challenging for all of us to stay connected. And when restrictions are lifted and folks are vaccinated up, uh, we are going to have a lot of work to do as a community of faith to come back together to learn and to grow and to worship and to continue to deepen our walk with God in one another. But the community of faith is important. Number two, the, the second aspect that we learn from this passage is to keep seeking. Even though Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a, a leader of the Jews, he came knocking on Jesus' door, seeking to know more, seeking to grow in his experience of God. So now, I may step on toes a bit, but a question that I think we have to honestly ask ourselves, especially during this time of Lent, that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? Are we, are you, continuing to knock on Jesus' door, seeking to learn, seeking to grow and experience more and to grow closer to God. Number three, the third way in which spiritual formation occurs is through service and care for and about. Nicodemus is quite clear 
the reason he comes knocking on Jesus' door at night. He says this, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. What were those signs that Nicodemus was referring to? Well, it was Jesus' healing of the sick, feeding of the hungry, caring for those in need. And through all those signs, people have experienced the presence of God. No one can do the things you do apart from the presence of God, says Nicodemus. For Nicodemus, it was the acts of caring and compassion of Jesus which Father opened his heart to God's presence in his midst. And I have heard story after story and experienced it myself as well that when we open up our hearts to needs around us with our own acts of of caring and compassion, such as feeding the hungry, cutting wood for the cold, visiting those who are sick or, or in prison or are homebound. It is those times that we often experience the presence of God and our spiritual lives deepen. Number four, lastly. Another way of spiritual formation that we see reflected in this gospel for this morning is openness to the guidance of God's spirit. The question faced by Nicodemus and anyone seeking to grow in faith is, are you willing to let go? Let go of your certainties about who God is? Are you willing to experience God in new ways? Are you ready, like Abraham and Sarah, to step out on a journey with God without the comfort of knowing exactly where it will lead you? Although Nicodemus came knocking on Jesus' door, what he ultimately discovers is that Jesus was knocking on his door. Jesus was inviting Nicodemus. Jesus is inviting you and me to let the Spirit of God be our guide, to be born anew. So how do we grow in faith? How do we grow in our encounter with this God who so loved the world? I believe that John 3 and this conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus is a pretty good guide for us. I don't know about you, but it has been my experience that I grow in faith, that I encounter the presence of God most often when I participate in a faith community, when I seek out opportunities for spiritual growth, when I serve and care about the needs of others, and when I let go of my own certainties and remain open to the guiding of God's Spirit. When I choose to trust in what God is creating, what God is doing, and how God is moving. To look up and live. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. Thanks to the Lord, a God who came, His love endures forever. Yeah.
Now hear our uh, closing benediction, join with us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So, May God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. And may God take your hearts, set them on fire. Amen. Have a great week.